Hi handsome and welcome to my 14th video. This is going to be a continuation of my last video in the series Should Life Skills Make More Money? Before we begin, however, let me just enjoy this one happy moment and thank every single one of you who decided to subscribe to me. I never imagined I would have even double digit subs, so having triple digit is just honestly insane. Thank you once again from the bottom of my heart. I hope I will be able to live up to your expectations in the future. I would also like to thank Blue Squadron for reacting to my previous video in this series. Even if he didn't seem to really like it, it was nice of him to at least give the video a shot. If nothing else, at least I got some ideas on what to improve on, so thank you Blue. Speaking of which, there were a couple of misconceptions and possible mistakes on my part in the first video I made on this topic, so I think it's only fair for me to address them before we move on. First of all, the previous part was me arguing for why life skills should make more money. I was talking about the effort each activity in the game takes and what effort even really means. Money per hour had very little to do with the first video, outside of the first video serving as a sort of methodology outline that we will use in this one. Therefore, none of the perceived arguments were me arguing in favor of life skill profitability. The only real arguments I made were in connection of where a given activity sits within a given metric. If the video came out as anything but that, then I assume it's a mistake on my part and I will try to do better this time and in the future. The aim of this mini-series is to spark a discussion. To be completely honest, I really do not understand the pushback towards people who want to make more money life skilling. If I had to guess, it's because people view life skills as a side activity or even as a cheat code. I think that the ideology behind it is worth a look and its own video, so if any of you watching this are interested in explaining your reasons for why you believe life skills should make the money they are making or even less, I am genuinely interested in hearing your opinion and reasoning, so feel free to write a comment or even hit me up in DMs. Same goes for people who think that life skills should earn more, or that grinding should earn less. However, let's not resort to a shouting match where we simply talk over each other. I don't want it to be that. Lastly, we need to talk about energy recovery again. And by talk, I mean I will make a video on energy and energy recovery, because judging by Blue's reaction, either I am doing something completely wrong, and there are hidden texts that I don't know about, or there is simply too much misinformation going on in the community. I already started working on the video, but do let me know if you know something I don't. Alright, that's all the catching up I had to do on the last video. Generally, I would say it was pretty well received, so thank you to everyone who liked it, and thank you once again to Blue for his reaction, and to everyone who had any constructive criticism on how I should improve. Now, here's the promised complete table of all the effort metrics combined. If you want my full reasoning why these are the way they are, and you haven't watched my first part in this series, then I recommend watching that. A reminder that I rated every activity in a vacuum, so this should not be compared to each other. I have reshuffled some of these scores around using some of the feedback I received and also slipping on it some more. Obviously, most of this is still going to be my opinion based on my own limited knowledge and experience, but I am completely open-minded to having my opinion changed some more. Bosses are probably way too high up, but as you can see, they are getting carried big time by them being limited and random. Here the table as an actual graph in case numbers bore you. That's the effort they kept down. Now let's take a look at the average money per hour. Here is a rundown of how I did it, since I should just probably cite my sources here. All grind data was taken directly from garmov.com. End game grind was pretty straightforward. I took the data of the top 20 grind zones at 250, 300, and 370% drop rate and took the average from the three averages, which is the total number. The reason I chose these specific drop rates is because I think 250% drop rate for endgame grinder should be the minimum. If you don't have at least 200% drop rate when you are grinding at 700 gear score and above, you are doing something wrong. 300% is for events, supreme scrolls or Arsha server. This is why I chose 300 and not 320 because Arsha does not always have the drop rate active. I mean the drop rate Land of the Morning buff active. Finally, 370% is the best case scenario, so this is Arsha with the event or Supreme Scroll and the Land of the Morning light buff. I did not include Castle buff, since the average video player, endgame or not, won't probably have a castle, at least not all the time. For seasonal grants, I chose to add 200% drop rate category along with the other three. This is meant to simulate a newer player. Now, of course, a newer player probably still won't pull these numbers anyway, 
but it's the best I can do in this kind of simulation. With season grinds, I have also decided to split them into two big categories, since the majority of these spots are either for the infinite potions or for Elvia Cups, and since Garmov.com gives them a numerical value, I chose to split seasonal into whether or not you are actually going to keep the PTs or the full drops. Keep in mind that Garmov does not have access to actual data, it is instead fully reliant on the honesty of the players putting the data in. I said this before in one of my older videos, but think of this site as your BDO Tinder. The same way people include all photos and say that they are 6 foot in their bio when they're actually 5'11 on Tinder. The same way people include their best hours and put 65 minutes spent in Marnie as 60 on Garmov. So just keep that in mind, this data is not entirely accurate. For cooking alchemy and processing, I pulled the data off of Bideolytics. I decided to split all of these life skills into whether you are buying the materials needed for the recipes from the central market or not. I am not very happy with this data, so I'm sure some of you will do a better job here than I did. I once again took the 20 most profitable recipes in each category and got the average. I actually averaged the two averages, so this one being the average for buying and not buying. Since some bottlenecks you will have to grind for, and some items you will get from other activities, such as workers, grinding, gathering, hunting, etc. With Alchemy, I also had averages without the top 3 items on Bideolytics, mostly because these are heavily bottlenecked, so you will probably not be doing a full hour of them anyway. Alchemy also gets byproduct average on top of their normal average, which I have to thank Kashira's video for. Go watch that to see how he got to the number I am putting here, it's very informative and I really recommend that. Processing also got its own special category, since the top 3 recipes all require platinum and are just at different stages of platinum heating. The final average includes four of these numbers, since you may still have some platinum laying around from workers and mining. I didn't include recipes that don't actually have processing EXP, so no simple alchemy like concentrated black gems and no imperial cooking or alchemy here either. Also, none of these three activities include recipes reliant on underwater gathering for obvious reasons. I also use Bideolytics for gathering numbers, but here I am super skeptical of them. These numbers look extremely outdated, and some evidence would point to this fact as well. Judging by the guides attached to the numbers provided, that are up to 4 years old. I strongly suspect that these do not include any of the Land of the Morning Light editions, mainly the gathering minigames, and they don't seem to include Harry's Breath either. For this reason, I decided to take the numbers and increase them by 25%, which I feel generally corresponds with at least my own gathering data that I have. I also added money gained from sharks, gained from Ferris Breath, by putting an average of 300 Ferris Breath and adding it on top of the final average. The numbers also include tier 3 hedgehogs, since this is what I have and what I think is generally easy to obtain. Finally, as you can see, we got two sets of numbers for Agris and no Agris, and I also named some spots as redundant, because in my opinion there is little to no reason to do these spots. You are either better off hunting for these items, or the gathered item can be replaced by a better option further up the list. Which brings us to hunting. This is rather straightforward once again. The numbers are taken from, I think that's a Grim Pause, a spreadsheet, and averaged. I did another average without the bottom three, as I have never seen anyone hunt at those spots. These numbers are done again with a tier 3 hedgehog, and I put 2k mastery, which I don't have, but I put it there anyway, and I also assume that you cannot buy Breath of Narcion or Breath of Omua, which are the things that, that you use for the 3 hour long heads. For trading, I also use Green Pals spreadsheet. I took the top 20 crates, making them in Valencia and selling them in Nampo Village, multiply them by the number of crates an artisan goblin could make in an hour, and then also split them into whether the worker has or doesn't have the perk to make the like 4 crates per craft. I also did 2 numbers, assuming the total number of workers. The conservative number I chose is 10, since this is roughly what I have, I think I have 11, and I think this is generally easy to obtain. The maximum number of workers is 32, since this is how many workshops there are in Valencia, so the total average is between these six numbers. You can probably get more if you have more workshops in other cities, but I generally don't see anyone doing that. If you are, leave a comment. 
I will also quickly mention workers in general. I just put a blanket free million per day, divided it by 24 hours and assume you have the money for your electricity bill. I do suggest that you check out the worker man spec sheet which I think is made by Yura and Summer, or a guide on how to set up your empire in general. Many better creators did videos talking about your worker empire, so I don't need to. Coming at you live from the editing room because I just made an oopsie. You don't make 3 million per day from workers, you make it from a worker, singular. So you probably don't have just one. I'm going to multiply it by 50 since I think that's a conservative number, but I cannot go and check right now because there's maintenance. So yeah, just sorry about that. Now we get into the really sketchy stuff. Farming data uses summer spreadsheet. I decided to put two columns, one for three and one for four cycles, assuming that you can attend to your farm three times per day during the work week and four times during the weekend. I then took the total average per day and divided it by three and a half, assuming that each cycle will take you roughly an hour to harvest and replant. This is probably not the best way I could have done this, so if there is a better way, do let me know. And keep in mind that these numbers should not really be be made into a per hour basis. That leaves us with barter, fishing, training and also bosses, none of which I have any data to back up my claims for. I decided to put bartering at 350 million per hour. I have heard and read on reddit and such that you make like one to one and a half billion per day. So if every reset takes you an hour and you can do four resets per day, I divided the average and just added a little bit on top in case I'm wrong maybe i should have put a bit less but i'm not sure if there are any sailors in chat or if by any miracle blue is watching this again i'm sure they will tell you i am not that confident in this number fishing i used velia beach for fishing and selling the fish to nampo village at like master 10 trading using my own empirical data at around 100 to 200 million per night so depending on how long i sleep and how lucky i am with the red fish i am not 2000 master fishing either so i just did the plank in 150 million per night divided it by the average of eight hours per day that you should sleep if you sleep less than that fix it your body will thank you. This will put us at like 20 million per hour, by the way. Training, I put the same number as fishing. I looked at the horse discord to see any profitability data, but all I got was this uh, really funny read from 2020. So go read that. It's kind of funny, even if it's probably outdated, but it mentions that fishing actually makes more money than training, which I have no idea. Again, I don't do horses. So if there are any horse girls, <laughs> around correct me in the comments if i am wrong finally we have bosses i got absolutely no idea how much i should put as an average here even lumping world guild and land of the morning light bosses together feels like a bad idea i could scour the internet looking for drop rates and then coming up with a definite answer but i will just put a blanket 450 million per hour assuming that your guild bosses and land of the morning light bosses take that long and that you do more than just one world boss per day. I could divide the number somehow, but does anyone really care about how much money per hour bosses really are? I know I don't. So if you do, I'm sorry. Which brings us to the final graph. You can see where every activity roughly stands. Now keep in mind that we are dealing with averages for the most part. I don't like the idea of only doing the single best activity since that can easily lead to burnout. So variety is the spice of life as they say. As for the numbers themselves, I think they turned out alright. You could maybe put endgame grinding average bit lower since it uses man-made data and gathering is probably like a 100 million per hour higher than the graph shows because i'm not really sure with the data i was provided or that i got what surprised me the most is actually season grinding it's insane just how little money you are making when grinding for infinite potion and cup yourself so what do i think about all of this assuming that i made no mistakes and this is the way it is i think everything sits roughly where it should sit at least in terms of money per hour I think gathering could be a bit higher since you can usually gather only like every other hour but again i think that this is a bit misrepresentative so i will let it slide seasonal grinding should actually get a bit of a buff and i now completely understand why people tell you to buy the potions and cups instead of grinding for it as for the semi afk and afk activities i think barter could go up a bit but even a simple fix like letting you barter one or two more times per day could be enough of a buff and i would love to see farming turn into more of an active life skill instead of just a waiting game 
Fishing and training could also use some help, even if they are completely AFK, making what is essentially 20 million per hour in 2024 is laughable. I hope trading rework is good and workers are not as big as people might think. Those are my general conclusions. Alright handsome, that's it for today's video. This one took a lot of research and work, so I hope you like it. I would once again like to thank Blue Squadron for his reaction on the first part of the series, and I would also like to thank every single one of you who has subscribed to the channel. You really are making my day better, it's really heartwarming to see this much positivity on my videos. Just because we are done talking about the data doesn't mean that this series is over, so join me next time as we talk about the big issues of life skills and how to maybe fix them. I don't know if the energy video will be a part of that or if I'm going to make it into its own video, but if I do split them, stay tuned for that as well. That's all I have to say for today. Remember to like and subscribe. Do let me know if I made any mistakes in the video and what you think about the findings and enjoy your grind.